Hi, welcome back to Linux. Today we're going to look at a few questions and answers that may come up when you install Linux, a new distro or switch distros or just getting started. One of them is going to be our settings configuration. We're going to be using Linux Mint for this. So let me pop over into the uh, the settings here, which if you uh, go over, you'll, be, you'll see it's system settings. And you can get to it by hitting the mint leaf in the lower left hand corner of the screen and then going up to that little uh, look kind of like dip switches uh, little icon there and that will bring up your system settings. You can also do it by doing a search for system settings and that'll come up. So as you look at system settings here, um, you've got a choice for backgrounds. So you can go change your background there. You can also right click the desktop and get to backgrounds. You can go to effects and you can look at some of the effects. We're not going to be getting into those right now. Uh, font selection. The font selection may be important for you if, if let's say you're running a 4K monitor and you want uh, and everything's a little small, then you might want to do scaling there. So you just scale that up to whatever size looks good for you and just take that up to like a 1.4 or 1.5 or whatever feels comfortable. They have themes. Now there is a certain little theme thing that I'm going to switch here. Um, Mint X is what I have to use for the window borders. Uh, Mint X is actually the is much better than Mint Y. And why is that? Well, in Mint Y, if you have two black screens next to each other, you can't tell where the border is. So it's it's really confusing and annoying and it's just a, a pain. Uh, Mint X gives you nice crisp borders so you know where your terminal windows end and begin. So I, the only thing change I've made there is a Mint X on a Windows border right there. Going back over, we have accessibility options. You can look at accessibility in there, uh, things that might might, uh, might help you in here for accessibility. You can always look at these and, and see what options might uh, might help you out there. So account details, go to your account. We have applets, date and time, desk. Let's, let's click on date and time really fast. You'll see that we've got the date and time set. And you can see the display the date, where we can display the date, which will appear in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. It'll actually tell you what day. So it'll say Saturday, January 26th at 9.15, what time we are right now. And it is a 24-hour clock, so it's 21.15. Uh, you got desk glitch. You can pop little things up on your screen. You have your desktop. You can play with that. Extensions. Uh, under general, we'll just click on that really fast. You can see your interface scaling. If you want to do normal or double, you can do that. I'm leaving that on auto. Uh, this is something that allows you to have a 4K monitor, and then you just double it so it's it's in 1080p, and the kind of uh, look it gives you. And that's the kind of scaling a lot of people like to use. But I am uh, I don't want to do that because I really want the 4K feel where I can have several windows open at the same time. So we go over uh, hot corners. This is something I use all the time. So enabling that feature allows you to go hit the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and it shows you all the desktops that you can you can access there. Uh, there are a couple of other options for that. You can use desktop cubes, and, and you can just not show all workspaces there. You can actually have it do different things there, run a specific command if you want to. Let me go over, and uh, of course you have input methods. If you want to look at those kind of settings, and what comes up with those you can and languages and notifications online accounts etc um, let's pop on down here windows here's another thing that might be uh, something good to, to uh, save I mean change would be windows and click it inside of windows right there we have the behavior and that is location of newly opened windows it will by default go in the center so I'm going to make that automatic. The reason I changed that to automatic is if you open a window in the middle of your screen, the next one opens right on top of it, exact same size, right in the middle of your screen. So if you open 10 windows, it only looks like you have one open in your screen. So by doing automatic there, it will actually cascade the windows down your screen so that you can tell how many windows you have open. Just a neat little uh, feature. Uh, I don't know why that's not enabled by default, but you know, that, somebody decided to do that startup applications we have a screensaver here so you can turn off your screensaver if you want to uh, privacy if you turn over there you can turn off or <laughs> turn off privacy <laughs> it's actually remember recently accessed files you can do that and never forget old files and that's fine and that's fine for me uh, so that's one of the things that's really convenient is when you go in you can find your recent files and your history there yeah of course your mileage may vary and whichever one whichever setting you want to put on there you can set the number of days or whatever it might be 
uh, you can set that yourself. And of course, you can always just turn that off and all your files that you've opened will go away. We've got Bluetooth, color settings, uh, display. Display is where you change uh, your resolution. So if you want to change the resolution of display, then you click right there. We got a 496 by 2160 down to 720 by 576. So a bunch of options in there uh, where we can change that. Uh, graphics tablet, if you have one of those installed, keyboard, mouse and touchpad. If we click on keyboard here, then we have a repeat delay and repeat speed. And so if you want to crank that all the way up, feel free. Um, mouse and trackpad, if you go into the mouse and trackpad options, you'll see a couple of the options a little there uh, where you have custom acceleration, custom sensitivity. These are all things that if you're looking at DPI controls with your mouse, you can play with it here or you can just get a, a really good mouse that uh, you can control your DPI on the mouse itself. Network settings, power management. Inside of power management, we can go over and turn the screen off or suspend when inactive for a certain amount of time. And of course, you get your printers. Uh, we'll click on sound. On sound, we have where we want the sound to go, what device is output, what device is input. And there's a really cool feature here. Let's go over to settings and you can change your amplification so that the maximum volume goes above 100%. That's kind of like cranking it up to 11. Yeah, so we can dig up to 100% here. So that's kind of fun. Applications there. There's no applications currently using sounds. That won't come up. Uh, a couple of sounds that I normally change is minimizing and maximizing windows. So I'll go through and I'll change those. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, inserting and removing a device. So that plugging in and unplugging, I'll usually change that sound to the uh, the minimize and maximize. So which one is this? this is plug in. So I'll maximize on that one. And then unplug. I'll uh, unmaximize or minimize in that one. And so the idea on that is the uh, the standard noise for plugging in and unplugging is just really annoying. Uh, so I change that off to make it not as not as loud. Uh, then we have driver manager, our firewall, login window. Uh, in this case, I'm using an NVIDIA card, so we have NVIDIA settings. Uh, software sources. We'll look at that right now, and then users and groups. So click on software sources. So I'm going to ask you to enter your uh, password there so you can enter your, your password to get ready for your, uh, your software sources configuration. Uh, if you can see the window that came up, it'll come up and uh, you'll have a couple of mirrors. If you just click on the mirror there, it will automatically go find the fastest mirror for you and then you reload the cache. That is it. That's actually just it on getting the systems, uh, the system settings set as you install the new distro get everything kind of running the way you want it to run. And then uh, afterwards, we can go through and install some initial applications. We can change our wallpaper. Uh, we can go through and make sure that we've got manufacturer's drivers and why we would want manufacturer's drivers instead of the, the open source built-in drivers and uh, some other options like that. Hope that this is helping out. And I look forward to talking to you again sometime.